Hi guys, so today is going to be a, a weird day for me. It's currently 10 o'clock in the morning and I've been up for seven hours. My son came into the bedroom at three in the morning and long story short, we ended up uh, going to hospital in an ambulance. He's fine, he's absolutely fine, but uh, he had some quite serious breathing difficulties. So uh, we got taken to the hospital and um, by the time we got there, he was he was feeling a lot better, but the, he, he's absolutely fine. There's not really anything to report there. It's all fine, all dealt with, but the, the, the biggest legacy of that trip is gonna be that I've been up since three in the morning, which I'm not very good when I don't get enough sleep, <laughs> but um, I'm trying to look at it as a gift. You know, it's a gift or a curse. And um, although I'm going to be flagging a little bit later on in the day, it's given me all these extra hours to do things. So I've already uh, made a giant bolognese and there's a reason for that. And it's related to these courgette plants. And I, I did mention yesterday that I would talk to you about it today. So if you've grown courgettes before, uh, zucchini is what they're called in America, then you will know that they are just a prolific plant. They're such a giving plant. From one plant, you will get 30 or 40 courgettes uh, in a season. So, where, and when they're producing, they're producing, so we're, we, we've got, I think, one, two, three, we've got six or seven plants here. And when they're producing, from these six or seven plants, we'll be getting probably two courgettes every single day. So as you can imagine, they're one of the things that um, gardeners most often find that they're dealing with gluts of. So obviously we make a lot of bolognese type sauces where we would use them in it. But another thing we do is we make uh, courgette boats. So a courgette boat is uh, a, a courgette cut in half, scoop some of the middle out and we basically just fill that with a bolognese but you could fill it with anything you could fill it with curry you could fill it with um a creamy chicken sauce anything literally anything um but the idea is at our house my children they love it with the bolognese on now of course last season when we were getting courgettes all the time it got to the point where they were a bit you know sick of them you know they'd had enough because we, there were so many to use up all the time but because it's been several months since that time my son has been nagging me dad when can we have courgette boats when can we have courgette boats so it's really great that there's something that they're now looking forward to now as you will know because i've mentioned it several times my annual garden my annual vegetable garden is so far behind where it was last year we had all sorts of problems and it's taken until now we've only just started harvesting the courgettes which is a good six to eight weeks behind where we were last year but we've got more plants so we're still going to be able to harvest lots and lots that we can preserve to use through the winter because i've got another row of them over there they're a little bit behind these so we've got uh double the plants that we had last year so we're going to get lots and lots of spares to get us through the winter but because we've just started harvesting them I knew that now is the time to uh, make our first courgette boat filling. So I've made a giant bolognese this morning and um, we're going to have that for tea with pasta. And then I've made enough to feed our family five or six times. So with the leftovers, we will be making lots and lots of courgette boats over the coming days. So there's lots of varieties. You can see down here, we've got these yellow ones. So this is the actual courgette. This is the bit that you'll harvest and you want to harvest them when they're quite small they will grow on to be marrows so i'm not going to take this one now but probably tomorrow i'll take this one we've had a lot of dry weather as well really dry weather but we're due a lightning storm in a few hours so uh hopefully we get a really good downpour and you can see here look we've got another of the yellow ones coming there and then some different now this one's a bit bushy this plant i should take some of this foliage back which i will do later today but we do have lots and lots of flowers coming through in there which are all going to be courgettes and then here here you'll get some idea as to how 
dry it's been. You see the uh, the shape of this courgette has been formed like that due to the weather. But we'll actually take that one off because that's still going to be nice and tender and delicious. But if it gets much bigger, it's going to become a marrow. <laughs> a marrow is just a large courgette. That's all it is. But they, uh, they're just not quite as nice. Uh, I'll probably take that one off later today or tomorrow as well. And we'll do a bit of weeding. And here's another one which is definitely ready for harvesting. I'll just pull him out for you. That's about the perfect size for a courgette. And more back there and there. So as you can see, now that they are producing, they're going to be coming thick and fast. And we are going to be able to be harvesting probably 10 to 20 courgettes a week from this row. And as I said, we've got some others. Or do we? I thought we had some others down through. Yes, we do. Here they are. Just next to them, the other side of the path, there are some younger plants that, even though they've got a lot less greenery on, they are not going to be far away because you can see them flowering already. So we're going to have lots and lots of courgettes soon. This is our... So this is the last year that we'll be planting courgettes in that bed there because this is going to become one of our perennial beds we're trying to move more and more towards perennial vegetables so I, I just I love perennial vegetables I'm so passionate about them um, so basically from here on back this is all going to be given to these Egyptian walking onions now I've done a video specifically on these onions and if you're interested in perennial vegetables I strongly recommend that you go and check that out because these uh, perennial walking onions are definitely something that you're going to want in your garden if you're into perennial vegetables. And to the left there, or to my left there, we can see a row of uh, rainbow chard. So that's going to also be a perennial vegetable. That will come back year on year. Chard's a great plant. It's so underrated. So for vegetables, there's lots of, you know, official classification. All these words that we're used to hearing, you know, brassicas and legumes. But I think from a from a use point of view, you know, you can separate them out into some other categories. There are your, your boiling leaves, if you like, which would be cabbage. You know, cabbage is something that we would generally just boil and eat the leaves of. And then in that category, you'd also have spinach and you'd also have kale. And we've got spinach and kale, a row of each back there. But chard is another great one. It's a great boiling leaf vegetable. So you literally just you know, harvest it and use it like spinach. But it's got a second use. It's also got the uh, boiling stem part. These thick stems, you would actually separate and you would slice them up and boil them and serve them as a completely separate vegetable. So they're a great plant for that. And I, one of the reasons I love them so much as well, these are rainbow chard and you can see why they get that name. So you've got this here. Just behind it, you've got this one with the bright red stems. And then you get two plants back, bright yellow, got orange. They're just a beautiful plant. This is going to become another perennial vegetable bed with the chard up the side and then onions taking up the rest of it. And then at the back, we've got runner beans. Now, these are again going to be a perennial vegetable. Uh, try and ignore the the pumpkin plant, which is attempting to take over my entire garden. It's a really substantial garden, and uh, it's giving it a really good shot, <laughs> to be fair. But tucked in behind that trailing pumpkin is this runner bean plant. Now again, this I'm going to be growing as a perennial, and the one behind it there. We're literally just going to chop it down at the end of the season and leave it in the ground and that's going to come back next year so uh i've actually done a podcast on that subject it was the one where i was talking with liz zorab from by the farm so uh if you want to know a little bit more about that that's where to get that information but anyway so i've come out to grab a couple of courgettes to go in my bolognese and have a coffee so i'm going to just sit down now um over by the ponds and uh, 
finish my coffee and try and keep myself awake for the next however many hours. So it's uh, it's now four o'clock in the afternoon. I am still underslept, <laughs> quite tired, but uh, coming out to do the goats. I've spent the rest of the day um, doing loads of paperwork. I've got a little office and uh, I've just been so busy lately. I had a mound of paperwork that I just built up. So I've got all that done. So it's certainly not been a wasted day. Coming out to do the goats and what a difference a day makes. If you remember uh, yesterday, the, the heat, I had to basically alter where I was tying the goats so they could be in the shade. Well, today, yeah, overcast and I think it's gonna rain. I can hear the odd bit of thunder, but we have been waiting for this. I've been expecting this rain all week. We were told it was coming on Monday, then they put that back till Tuesday, then they put it back till Wednesday, and then they put it back till today. So I'm hoping we're gonna get a really good downpour. Well, I was expecting it earlier, so I just hope it holds off for another 10 minutes or so while we get the goats done. So my son, he came out before me and he's already tethered up some of the goats for me. He's uh, given me a huge head start. So I'm gonna, get on and milk these goats now. So that's the goats all done. It's just starting to rain now. So I won't lie, I'm a little bit disappointed because uh, I was going to put sprinklers over my vegetable bed this afternoon if we didn't have any rain. I thought, no, it's definitely coming. It's definitely coming and it is coming, but I just wanted, we're, we're just in desperate need, in desperate need of the rain really for the gardens and uh, wouldn't be too bad for the mushrooms either. I haven't been very successful lately for uh, mushroom hunting and if we get a really good downpour then that's uh, that's the best time to uh, to go out mushroom hunting as well. So that's gonna wrap it up for today really. I'm just gonna go and feed the pigs and then I'm gonna go in. We're gonna have our spaghetti bolognese and then I am going straight to bed. It's gonna be hopefully it's going to be 6.30 and I'm going to be in my bed if everything goes to plan, which it won't because it never does. But uh, yeah, so me and the girls are going to say good night. See you on the next one.